Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to our session. And sorry for the delay. We have had a problem with the, with the screens. Today, we are going to talk about how to automate processes with and without code with Visual Workflow. My name is Alvaz Cona Rivas. I work as architect lead for Financial Force at Supply Chain Management Product Area. And this is my email and my Twitter handle in case that you want to contact me later. I am a Salesforce MVP and the South Spain Developer Group leader. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. I'm Agustina Garcia. I work as principal software engineer at Financial Force, and I'm also Salesforce MVP. Financial Force is the number one cloud ERP, and for a SFDC customer, using Financial Force is a no-brainer because we seamlessly integrate their front office activities with their back offices. We have more than 700 employees across the globe, and our headquarters is here in San Francisco, but we also have offices in UK and in Granada, Spain, where Alba and myself are based, and we are under recruiting, so come to visit us at booth number 324. This is the agenda. We will start with a quick introduction about visual workflow, and via use case, we will explain how to create a visual workflow from scratch and make it a little bit more complex. Finally, you will have some takeaways. So first of all, I want to explain the difference between some key concepts which names uh, may confuse you in Salesforce. So I'm sure that most of you know already Flow. Flow is a tool with which you can uh, create actions that will execute behind the scenes when a record is changed. However, Visual Workflow is a complete product that will allow you to automate processes with or without code and with or without visual elements. So uh, to sum up, Visual Workflow is the name of the product. Cloudflow Designer is the tool that you use to drag and drop boxes and build your flows. Flows are the processes that you automate and flow interviews are the running instances of flows. Then we have several flow types. First of all, we have the basic flow type. The basic flow type uh, will allow you to build a process or, well, a UI with several steps, typically a wizard or a survey, in which you need some user interaction. The typical ways to distribute these flows will be sending the, the URL directly to the customer or, for example, embedding it in a custom link or a custom button. Then we have auto launch flows. Auto launch flows don't need user interaction. These are processes that you can model with Visual Workflow and that will execute actions um, behind the scenes when something occurs. For example, typical actions could be sending an email, posting to chatter, etc. And typically, you are going to fire these kind of flows with Apex code, with REST API, with Process Builder, etc. And then we have a third type called user provisioning flow, which is used to provision users to third party apps. But we are not going to talk about this one today. OK, so this is our use case. As I am user, I would like to book my hotel room via Salesforce so that I don't need to go to an agency. Then when I leave the hotel, uh, I want that uh, and I pay for it. I want to get the invoice about that and also send a survey in order to get my feedback. Finally, we have a third party system that also wants to use our flow for, book, for, booking, um, for booking rooms. And we will start just with the part of booking uh, rooms in our system. So let us start with the demo. So I have my booking website system. I'm here. I'm going to look uh, to select Barcelo Granada Congress. I'm going to choose a family room for the weekend. But this room is not available. So I need to start again. Barcelo, suites room. It should be big enough for the family. Same for the weekend. But the price is too high. So I decide not to go for it. And the flow finished. I will try it again. Barcelona, I really like this hotel, so I may give it a chance. Union Suite Room for the weekend again. 
this price is better, so I decide to go for it, and I get the reservation. Now if I go to hotels, if I look for Junior Suits room, go to all of them, yeah, we have this one, that is the record that we have just created. So how I have done? First of all, we need to provide a big list with dynamic information. I want to include all the hotels that I have in the system. And if I include some other or I remove any hotel, I, want, I don't want to modify this flow. I want to get the information dynamically. For that, I'm going to use a dynamic record choice for this big list. I need to pass the, rec the object that I'm going to use for this uh, big list. Secondly, I need to uh, define which field I'm going to show in this uh, pick list. And the last step is to create a variable in order to store the information related to the record that I have chosen. In this case, I'm going just to pick up the ID. The next step is to look for the facilities related to this hotel. It's similar than before, pick list, dynamic record choice, but this time I'm going to filter by the hotel ID the variable that I, uh, that I got from the previous screen. So that I'm going just to retrieve those facilities related to this hotel. Then I'm going to retrieve, I'm going to create a facility select as object and retrieve all the information. I'm doing this in, instead of just getting the ID because in a later step I want to show the amount related to this facility. So that I'm going to miss one step if I just get all the information here instead of the ID and look for the rest of the information. The next step is a, a fast lookup. I'm going to look for those reservations, if they, there is any reservation already in the system, with this um, check-in and check-out and facility ID. And I'm going to store it in the reservations list. Why I have chosen a fast lookup instead of a record lookup? The main difference is that with fast lookup, we can retrieve an S object or a list of S objects. Uh, uh, and however, if I go for a record lookup, I'm going to retrieve just a single record, the first one that matches the filter criteria. Then the decision. Do I have reservation? What I have to do? Go ahead, finish. The last step, well, there are some other steps in the middle, but uh, all of them are similar to those that we have already explained. And the last one is the record create. I'm going to create the reservation with the information that I got from the flow. And the last thing, the variable, the reservation ID, is the ID of the record that I created. This time I decided to go for a record create instead of a fast create, because for fast, I need to pass an S object. So I need a middle step in order to create the subject with all the information. However, with, with record create, I can pass all the information in one go. That's all for the simplest use case. This is the second one. I'm going to make it a little bit more, more complex, the, uh, the flow itself. But at the end, the UI is more simple because in the same screen, I have a dynamic record choice with all the hotels, but I have a facility pick list with hard text code. I'm not going to retrieve facilities related to a hotel. This is the flow. So the main difference here is that I'm going to retrieve all the reservations related to those things that I have chosen in the first screen. And I'm going to iterate via this loop. And for every single reservation in the assignment step, I'm going to look for the facility related to the reservation and create the facilities booked list, so that I can look for those facilities available. However, there is no a step that allows you to filter by a list of S objects. That's the moment when we include some Apex code. In order to do that, we have two options. First of all, create a class and implement process plugin interface. The second option is to um, use add invocable method annotation. I prefer to go for that because that allows you to use collections, for example, in the argument, and that's what I need. I have a facility, a list of facilities booked, and I have a global class with a list of IDs and the hotel. I pass this information as an argument, and after filtering, well, doing the circle and filtering by that, I get the facilities available. 
Once I save that class, it appears under the Apex section, and via drag and drop, I can just provide the information, the parameters in the class, the facilities booked, the one that I got in the loop and the assignment, and the hotel ID. That's all for this case. Alba. OK, so <laughs> to continue with our use case, now what we want to implement is that once the reservation is paid and the guest has left the hotel, we want to send him an email in order to get his feedback. This email <laughs> is going to contain a link that redirects the customer to a survey in order to get that feedback. So we are going to implement this use case really with two flows. The first flow is going to be the flow that sends the email, and the second flow is going to be the survey. For the first flow, we first need a guest uh, a record lookup, because we need to get the guest email. Then we will pass all the information to the send email um, a standard action that you can uh, find under the study action section and just drag and drop it. In this action, you will be able to uh, set up the body and the subject for the email. And for example, you can use email templates, but in this case, we have just used simple test variables. The important thing about this flow is that it needs to be auto launch. Why? Because we want it to send the email to the customer once the reservation is paid. And for that, what we can do is to create some code in our reservation trigger that once the reservation is paid, instantiates the flow with this uh, flow interview email flow um, method here and pass the parameters that the flow is going to need, for example, the guest and the hotel name. Remember at the beginning that I talked about flow interviews. This would be a flow interview, a running instance of a flow. Let's see a demo of this. So here I have the reservation that Agustina has just created. I'm going to pay it. And I'm going to check my email. Well, here it is. Here we have uh, the email that redirects me to the next flow. The next flow is a very simple basic flow in which we have some screens to collect the user data. Nothing special to highlight here. But what about if you are in Lightning Experience? Well, the good news is that you can embed your flow directly in Lightning Experience. There is a flow component that you can drag and drop, and you can decide which flow do you want to show here. Obviously, a flow which is a basic one with a visual elements. And you can define which layout do you want the flow to have. And if the layout needs any parameters, you can pass the parameters right there. But also, if you embed the flow in a record uh, homepage in Lightning Experience, you will have the record ID available for free. So what you can do is to create a record lookup to retrieve the information that you need for that flow. Let's see a demo of this. So here, I'm going to switch to Lightning Experience. If I go to the guest record homepage, we can see that our flow is already here. We have embedded the flow, which is the hotel survey with some steps, etc. And if I click on edit page, I can see that this is a flow component in which I have specified that the layout is, is two columns, and in which I have specified that I want to pass the record ID into uh, the variable record ID. Before winter 18, the only possibility was having a variable called record ID. Now you can select which variable do you want to pass the information in. So continuing with our use case, now what we want to do is that once the reservation is paid, I'm not only sending the email to the user, but also I want to use a flow that somebody else has packaged. For example, for creating invoices. 
if you install a package flow, or if you install a pa package that contains flows, those flows are going to appear directly in the Cloud Flow Designer in the flow sections. So what you can do is that directly drag and drop those flows and use them in your as part of another flow, for example. In our case, what we have done is extend the same email flow that was being fired once the reservation was paid with that uh, call to the third party uh, create invoice flow. As this flow needs some extra information, what we are going to do is to pass that information from the trigger from which we launch the email flow. For example, the total amount or the guest name. The flows that you install uh, from a managed package will contain a namespace as any other thing that you install in a man from a managed package. Finally, uh, we have a last use case in which we want to expose uh, to our third party to a third party booking system a way to create reservations in our organization. So what we are going to do is to create a simple flow that allows you to create reservations in the system and set it, as, uh, set it to be an auto-launch flow. If you do that, an endpoint is going to be automatically created for you in the REST API. So what we are doing is exposing this flow to the third-party system in order they can do REST API calls to our endpoint, passing in the information that we want, that we need in JSON format, and creating the reservations in our application. So finally, some takeaways about this presentation. So remember that visual workflow has nothing to do with, with workflow. Also, that flow will allow you to create process, to automate processes, to collect user data uh, that can contain only um, clicks not code steps, but also that we can extend with Apex and that we have two main types of flows, the basic one with visual elements and the auto launch with, uh, without visual elements that can be invoked through Apex, REST API, etc. Also that you can use flows in Lightning Experience and that flows can be packaged and distributed to your customers. So that's it. Thank you so much. If you have uh, any questions. <laughs> Thank you.